Welcome to the Port City Plate Podcast, presented by the Anvil Bites Food Tour. Port City Plate Podcast, serving up the food, history, and people of Mobile, Alabama for people who love the Port City. I'm your host, Chris Andrews, and I am super excited about uh, today's episode and excited to welcome everybody that's listening to the episode. Uh, we're talking about one of my favorite food groups today, and, and that's burgers. And I'm sitting here with Adam Womack, and Adam is the owner and operator of the Hammered Cow. Uh, Hammered Cow is, uh, is located in downtown Mobile at the Insider Food Hall. Um, and, and Adam has quickly gained a reputation um, around town having one of the best burgers in Mobile. And, um, and so, which, I mean, that's, that's not an easy task when you think about, you know, some of the burgers in Mobile. So I'm excited about this episode. Adam, welcome to the Port City Plate Podcast. Thank you, my friend. Happy to be here. Yeah. Appreciate you having me. I'm excited. Uh, so tell us about the Hammer Cow. Like how, how did the, what's the story about the name? How did the, the concept come about for the Hammer Cow? So I guess we opened uh, June 1st, 2022. But I guess the story goes back to the fall that previous year. And, you know, looking back, I mean, it, it came out of nowhere. The opportunity was just kind of thrown in, in uh, my wife and I's face uh, by some friends of ours uh, that were, you know, had already basically committed to a spot, you know, down there. Uh, I would love to say that burgers was like just our idea. Uh, It definitely was a food group in there that was lacking. Um, There was uh, talks of one of the owners of the property really wanted a burger place in there. So, you know, we, at that point, you know, we had to make a decision. Is this something we want to do? My wife works at Austell, but I've, You know, I had a full-time job with a a company that sold, you know, power wheelchairs uh, to people with, you know, ALS and Parkinson's, that kind of thing. So we both had great careers. We were, you know, we're living comfortably. And then, you know, am I going to quit my job to open this? And, uh, you know, we got down with uh, the few people that we were talking to. uh, What we heard made sense. So, you know, we just decided to, to bite the bullet and... Give it a try, you know. Jump in. That's tough. Uh, it's tough. Yeah, it was a I mean, very tough decision. I, sorry to interrupt you too. I, I, I tried to talk my wife out of it a couple of times, <laughs> and she's the one that that uh, really persisted. And and I'm, you know, thankful now that we did. Are you the more risky person in the marriage? Uh, you know, I've definitely. Um, I hate. To say, I've had my share of jobs. Uh, I, I definitely stayed at the places I was at for you know more than several years. But, um, I guess. I'm not super risky, but I was always kind of looking for how do you better, you know, yourself, how do you better your career and the position you you know, you can put your family in. So, you know, once I kind of committed to the idea, you know, it was, I was in, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Have you had any restaurant experience in Yeah. Prior? So I met my wife, uh, at Alabama. Um, I was on the five and a half year plan. So <laughs> I worked at a Buffalo Wild Wings up there um, the entire time I was in college. I, you know, started expo and, and food running, I, you know, worked my way up to waiting tables. And then when I, I left there, I was bartending. Uh, same for her. Uh, we really had no back of the house experience. And for anyone listening to this, that's been to the food hall, they know that that entire stall is back of the house. <laughs> so huge learning curve there. Um, but, you know, right out of college, I uh, moved to Mobile uh, with her and started working for Cisco Foods. So I had some understanding of, like, you know, the grocery business and, you know, what it looked like from that perspective, which I think, you know, hindsight now kind of helped a lot when you're looking at pricing and, you know, you're trying to figure out what your menu items are going to be. So I had a, you know, had a fair amount, I would say, but from a management ownership perspective, Zero. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's, those are the best spots, though. Yeah, well, and that, you know, one of the things um, that I learned is, you know, you got to humble yourself a little bit because you don't know what you don't know. And uh, just the admin portion of, like, getting everything up and running was, you know, to someone that doesn't like admin, uh, work was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can fully relate to you. I, I, I worked at a steel mill prior to starting a, a food tour, right? So, I mean, you know, you're two in a two totally different worlds. And, you know, just quitting up there, it was tough. It was, you know, like I said, yeah. com- you're living comfortably. Um, you know, you're getting the paychecks every other week. And, 
you know, uh, it, so it's tough to go out on your own and, and, and kind of branch out. But um, uh, I, I wanted to ask you about your menu. How did you, how did you create the menu? Um, you know, if you, if you don't have a restaurant, uh, how do you create a menu of burgers and fries and all that that goes into it before your restaurant even opens? Well, thankfully, um, we had some very good friends along the way um, that actually started started out in business with us. Um, one of those uh, one of those people had been in the business and still is in the business for um, 12, 13 years. I got to give uh, Shannon Walters a shout out uh, from Wemos. Uh, his you know kind of mentorship and uh, just his ability to just advise and assist, I guess you could call it, was, uh, was very important. Uh, and then, you know, me, uh, the chicken district owners, Alan, Danielle Williams, um, my wife spent a lot of late nights at, uh, at our, at our buddy Shannon's house, um, with the Blackstones out, you know, we, we knew, um, and I know we'll get into this a little, probably a little later. Um, I may be stealing right now. Um, we knew that like, okay, you've got these behemoth burger places in Mobile and, and there's a few of them that are just, you know, so well known. If you think burger in Mobile, you know, one of those that comes to mind is Callahan's. Yeah. Um, we're like, we want to do a little bit different style than like your, you know, your thicker, like pub, pub burger, I guess you call it. And we'd been on social media, um, just looking at everything. And the one thing we kept coming back to was smash burgers. Uh, you know, once we dialed that in, it's like, all right, how do you cook them? You know, like, what do you do? And, you know, we still use some of these tools today, but we, uh, we were in the backyard with a couple of Blackstones um, coming up with any crazy idea we could uh, using literally, uh, yeah, there was some normal kitchen equipment like a spatula, but, uh, you know, plaster putty knives from Lowe's, which we still <laughs> scrape our burgers with. Um, so it, it was a very, it was a very fun process. Uh, we only at the time, I think had five specialty burgers and like a build your own section. And then our shareables at the time, appetizers consist of just fries, you know, just different mixtures of, uh, loaded fries. So what, you know, one aspect we knew we wanted to keep it simple, especially to get going, but on the other, you know, like you were talking about, how do you come up with that? It was just a lot of trial and error. And I, you know, I can tell you right now, there were four or five burgers we cooked up that were like, absolutely no way that is not going on the menu. <laughs> what about being at the insider in the food hall? You know, kind of how has that experience kind of shaped your, your business so far, you know, as far as the customer experience, you know, because it, like I said, it, it's all back of the house. You know, everybody yeah. can see exactly what's going on, you know, in the back of the house. And, and so that's, that's got to be tough, you know, where a lot of restaurants, I guess, maybe, you know, they thrive on their front of the house experience. Sure. And I guess you don't so much get that opportunity. So how has that kind of shaped your, 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 your path so far? You know, I think um, for someone that's never uh, been on this side of the industry, I think it's been a blessing honestly um you know with everything being in that roughly 217 square foot uh has helped us probably more than we know um i look at uh you know i've got some buddies that own full service restaurants where you're greeted by a hostess you're you know guided to your table you sit down your you know your um your person waiting on you comes over and i just think about it man i'm like you know, thank goodness we didn't try to leap into that because, you know, those first few months, it was so hard just managing what we had. So, um, you know, in that same breath, I mean, the concept was new to Mobile, but definitely not new to, um, you know, your bigger cities. Um, I know Matt Lamond, uh, who kind of, you know, was his, his, this was his baby. Um, he'd been to food halls all over the country. So kind of, you know, knew what he wanted and what he wanted to do. Um, and I believe he said this before, Matt, sorry if he hadn't. Uh, but, you know, he wanted this to be a place where, you know, people had access to start their own business with the hopes of eventually moving out of there one day. So I think from a, the customer standpoint, um, you know, I think it's been great. Uh, we are counter service, but, you know, there's 
there's plenty of seating options. There's the bar next door, uh, which opens uh, a little later in the afternoon, um, you know, once we're about dinner time, you know. Um, so all around, I'd say that uh, just that little space and the way it's set up for us, um, even though we kind of had that mentorship and buddies that have been in the business for a while, uh, was just the perfect recipe, um, you know, to get a small business like that started. Yeah. And Matt did, he has said that on this podcast. So, yeah. Yeah. And he, look, he, does, he does encourage. Yeah. And, I, that. and hopefully, you know, I think that's probably the goal. One day we get to that point right. um, where we, we can grow out of there. And, you know, side note, I'd, I'd, pro- I'd love to, you know, we'll, we'll see one of these days what, what happens, but it'd be cool to have the little, the little hammer cow in there that was, is the little original, you know, <laughs> uh, kind of like Fusakli's has their place out on, um, what is that? Is yeah, right there on University. Yeah, that yeah. Whole, yeah. It's like, hey, that's, in the parking lot. that was the first one. <laughs> you know, so it'd, it'd be cool to to kind of see that through, too. Yeah, day. I like that. Yeah. And, yeah, there's a lot of seating there, too. You know, I know they've expanded. You know, of course, you, get, you mentioned the outsider next yeah. door. And, and now the the area in the back, the green space back there in the yeah. back, it's got some good good space. So there is – I've never had a problem – you know, it's, it's crowded sometimes. It is, but yeah. as crowded as it, as it is, there's always there's somewhere there's always go. somewhere for you to go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's uh, what's some of your favorite burgers? I mean, what, if somebody was going for the first time, what would you recommend? You know, for I'd them have, to get. I'd have to say probably the hammer. Um, and even though our our smash patties are very thin, um, it's a triple patty, three different cheeses. It's made our way. It's got bacon on it. Um, it's just, it's great for the Instagram too. You know, if you're, if you're looking to take a picture of your food and you know, you're that person when you're out, like it's just, it's a behemoth. I think people order it sometimes and are a little shocked when they get it, you know, but, um, I'd, I'd have to say that one, uh, first and foremost, I'll, the mushroom, uh, we call it the moose room, um, is, you know, one of my favorites too. We have a house made horseradish aioli that we put on it and it's, that's that's the only sauce there's no other you know vegetables or anything on it and that little patty that is smashed so thin it how in the world it's as juicy as it is and i kind i know a little bit of the science behind it but um it's just amazing uh that's you know you think like oh this thing we're gonna dry it out you know it's not gonna be any good and then it's the most tender juicy hamburger you've ever had yeah <laughs> Yeah, I can, yeah, you got to come hungry if you're coming for the uh, for the hammer. That's There's right. no doubt about yeah. it. Um, what about off the menu? As far as it could, is there anything that you can do for guests that that are off the menu or any secret me- any menu items or anything like that? So we don't really have any secret menu items. Um, we do get some awesome build your own options every now and then. And up until recently, I don't I don't believe we have it hanging on the drink cooler anymore. Uh, we had a lady come in and. I think she put absolutely every topping that we have to offer on this burger. Um, I have a picture of it. I'll have to find it and send it to you. It's uh, it was just this mon- beautiful monstrosity. I mean, I had like, you know, had to. I've had to chase several people down, you know, and be like, "Can I just grab a picture of that real quick?" Because it just looks amazing. Um, one of the ones we just added to the menu that won us uh, People's Choice um, during Burger Week back in October was the uh, peanut utter burger and it, you know peanut butter there's a, a spicy relish on it pepper jack cheese bacon there's that there's in no world should that make sense uh, but somehow that sweet and savory you know just works and uh, it's you know since we put it back on the menu and it's available that's been um, that's been a hot hot item for all sure. right so i didn't know it was on the menu so no, I'm gonna, I, 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 I didn't get it during burger week yeah. yeah i was like you i raised my eyebrows for sure oh, yeah. i'm sure like everybody did when you yes. first saw it and uh and but I, I didn't have that one during burger week so I'm, I'm gonna have to come get that one yeah and i, I i've got to mention the muau burger i think since we've been open um you know we talked about the the backyard burger cooking parties um that is the one that i was like this is going to get thrown off the menu <laughs> like the first month and like to our surprise man uh i guess kind of the same thing you put that that sweet pine i don't know you know people absolutely love it though so we i think for right now um i, I looked at it a couple of weeks ago i think it's still killing every other burger <laughs> really yes so it's so, got pineapple 
pineapple, barbecue sauce, onion, American cheese, bacon. So it's kind of that Hawaiian theme. Okay. Um, and I, you know, it's like pineapple on a pizza, man. Like you're either <laughs> you're either for it or you're very against strongly it. strongly against it. Yeah. And, either there's no middle ground. You know, I like pineapple, but I don't like it on my pizza. <laughs> so, but on a burger, it works. I've noticed that y'all have a pretty good working relationship there at the Insider. You know, like you mentioned uh, Alan and Danielle at Chicken District and, and some of y'all in there. So what are some, have y'all done some collaborations or let's well, talk about how kind of y'all have worked together in there? Because it seems like y'all do have a good working relationship. With, y'all don't see it as, as competition no, uh, between each other in there where it could, you know, you, I think yeah. you probably could see it that way if you had that kind of mindset. But uh, it seemed like y'all work together. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, in the beginning – uh, there were some ground rules set, you know, Matt and Jake, you know, wanted, wanted every stall to be different. Um, and I think that obviously helps with, you know, no one's got that feeling of like, oh, this stall is still in business from us. You know, um, a good example of that is uh, when Pizzeria Delfina came in, I think everyone's mindset in there was this is going to do nothing but help us. You know, I mean, they've got such a great following downtown that, you know, for us, foot traffic is everything. And we knew that if people were excited about having those guys back and, you know, they, they make a great product that, you know, hey, they get pizza one day, you know, they can come back and get a burger the next day. So I think, you know, as far as collaboration goes, there's not a whole lot of that. We all kind of get together and, you know, think about the direction everything's going and and obviously have our sidebar conversations um but as far as like the workflow in there yeah i mean like you said there's no animosity you know there's none of the competitive nature of anything i mean we're all just you know in our little space trying to make it work for you know each of our businesses and Honestly, I think, you know, the, the five vendors that are in there right now, um, it's just a good mix, man, especially for people that are like me, indecisive. Right. You know, you, <laughs> you, uh, you can go there, and maybe it doesn't help your indecisiveness that you have five options, but at least you have the options, yeah. you know. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been really cool. And that, another thing about, you know, um, those first two months, uh, I like to tell everybody this because I used to – I used to do CrossFit, and now I don't have a lot of time. Um, but I lost about 40 pounds in two months, just working all the time. I was the only grill cook. Um, so I think having having your buddies in there, which I think we'd all consider each other friends, and um, just kind of helped, you know, get you get get you through some oh, of those yeah. tough times. <laughs> right? Yeah, because like I said, you don't have a lot of downtime, not a lot of no, uh, extracurricular activities going on. Yeah, it's definitely like a big family in there for sure. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and, and I think that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's all about really to me, you know, is working together. And, um, I, I kind of feel that way a little bit in the tourism industry in mobile, you sure. know, I mean, as far as, uh, if some other tours come in, like, let's, let's do that. Let's, right. let's go. I mean, the more people we can bring into mobile and that's going to do nothing but help us. And then the more people that are coming to mobile, taking other things or doing other activities sure. and attractions, that's by, by far going to help us, you know? So, um, I think, I think having that. That yeah. kind of mindset is, is helpful for all of our businesses. I think so, too. And I think uh, just the explosion of downtown in the last few years, I mean, I, I get excited. You know, I see an article every now and then. It's like, you know, 10 new restaurants to open up in downtown Mobile by this date, you know. And um, I just, I mean, the more the merrier, um, you know, no matter what it is. Because like you said, I mean, um, the more – the more you know people we have down here the the more there is to go around and uh like i said i I love the direction um that we're going in as a as a city especially downtown and uh you know it's just good to see some of these spots that maybe have you know sat empty for a while um or you know god forbid something closed down but something reopened in its place like it's just nice to see it it seems like it's very healthy down here. yeah definitely I think, yeah, inside in particular, that location has helped kind of bridge the two gaps yeah. of downtown, you know, with the, the Royal Street side that's traditionally been real busy. Right. And then so that, that stretch between the Cathedral and Wenzel's, you know, is really coming along now. Yeah, I'm excited. So that's that's, uh, that's, that's, excited. that's huge to have that entire stretch of Dolphin now yes. full with restaurants and shops and 
to uh, have a to have that middle part, like you said, that bridge fill up one of these days would yeah. be just super That's gonna exciting. Be awesome. yeah, yeah, make it battle house to Moe's all the way to yeah. all the way. Something to do no matter what stop you make. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you mentioned working with your spouse, and and, yeah. and my my spouse, we have worked together on the food tours before. A lot of yeah. people have taken a tour before with my wife Lainey, and. Uh, so talk about there's a lot of challenges there yes for sure yeah there's also a lot of good things that come out of it too so yeah. we'll talk about working with your spouse and how that's gone well you know we started this um i made the decision you know i was going to quit my job and and go with this full time um she has a full-time job uh so i can't say it like you know the first two months it was she gets off work she comes in and we close it down together uh, i think you know i think there's uh probably a learning curve there you know what I'm saying I think uh you know space is probably good for for everybody every now and then and, and when you're you're in this type of business or like what you guys do I mean sometimes you you don't get any of that but you know we uh we adapted very well I mean it was one of those things it was very stressful in the beginning when you know it was basically us and then a few other people um but I I'd have to say like um we've done very well um, good team you know I think at the end of the day like if you're going to do something like this and then that person's going to be involved like it probably helps to have that that trait you know in the relationship um, so overall it's been super positive um, I you know if, if I, I don't there's no way that uh, we could have done it without her you know what I'm saying it's uh, and, and I hope she feels the same way you know uh, <laughs> But, uh, it, like I said, it's been super positive. I think we've both got a lot of fulfillment out of, you know, actually starting the business. Um, like, hey, we can do this now. You know, this is something that, um, you know, so far has, has been, in our eyes, very successful. Um, so I think it's done nothing but, uh, you know, helped us in the long run. I mean, it, uh, like I said, it just goes back to can you get on the same page and yeah. how good of a team are you? So I'd, I'd, I'd give us an A plus in that regard, you know, um, for the business. All right, I'll, 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 I'll edit that clip right there, yeah, and I'll sad. send it to you so you can send that to her. Yeah, that's right. Thank uh, you. But I agree with you that it is uh, – I think that's one of the best things about uh, working with your spouse is you find – different strengths and weaknesses that you probably don't otherwise see in oh, a marriage. Yeah, sure. Um, and you can kind of, if you, if you're smart enough to, I'm going to let my wife, let her go with her strengths and hopefully she'll then return, you know, let me yeah. do the things that I'm good at. Sure. You know, and then if you kind of play together on those two roles, you make, you do make a good team. And I, yeah, I think we've definitely found that balance. And, um, like you were saying, you know, she's a, uh, she, she's in the fight, like, was in the financial world for a while and pretty much what she's doing she's still in the financial world and so from the get-go you know hey there's the numbers person you know like yeah. I don't want to I if I can keep from it I don't want to do any paperwork like I don't want to do anything but I'm just going to wake up in the morning I want to go smash burgers you know uh, I'll be the you know the the contact person for our team and, and things like that but um, yeah we definitely found uh the strengths and weaknesses early. And I think we probably even knew some of that going in. So, um, it made it a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How, what about some of the feedback you've gotten from the local community? I know, um, this podcast in particular, um, man, your, your name has been mentioned. I know of at least four episodes that's and awesome. this is only the 15th episode. That's good. Percentage. And so that, that's, that's, that's dang good. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's hitting it hard. Yeah. Um, you know, usually at the end of the show and we'll do it today later today on this show, uh, you know, I usually ask someone to, you know, talk about the best dish they've had lately or, you know, some of the best food they've had in downtown or, or, or anywhere in Mobile. Yeah. And, uh, and so, like I said, your name has popped up four times. And it's been people that I don't even know if some of them even knew who you were, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of Roosevelt in particular. Uh, Patterson is the doorkeeper at La Florida. I remember he mentioned that's you. Awesome. And, uh, and that's what I, – I, we, we got to talking about you and – I was like, that's what kind of, I was like, all right, we got to get Adam on the show. He's done come up on the, on the podcast about four times. <laughs> so we got to get him on the show yeah. and talk about it. But what about, uh, and we mentioned the, uh, Mobtown Burger Week, you know, you got the yeah. people's choice that were, what about some other feedback you've been getting? What's everybody saying? You know, um, I told you what I was doing earlier in the podcast before this. Um, I do not pretend, uh, to be a chef at all. 
you know, a lot of the menu ideas were collaborative and, you know, so like I, I take none of the credit. I just think that the process of how we cook the burgers kind of speaks for itself, but probably the biggest honor to me since we've been open is just our repeat guests. I mean, we have had, I see, you know, I'm thinking of a few guys uh, that come in each week. Um, maybe, you know, probably a couple times a week, order lunch from us. You know, they walk from somewhere down here um, in this part of the world up to our end of Dolphin Street um, to get their same burger every week. Uh, we'll have, and, and some, you know, the, the compliments we get on the way out the door, best burger I've ever had. Um, that, like I said, with these other burger behemoths in town, like that's a pretty stout compliment. Um, and then, you know, I think for me, the icing on the cake was burger week. Um, you know, your first year in business, I think we opened, we opened that June and then in October, you're able to win a piece of one of those awards. Um, that was absolutely, you know, crazy in my mind. So I think, you know, the biggest honor for us are just the, the people that I, that I see in there that come back day after day. Um, you know, cause goodness if if you got people coming back um there's obviously you know they they like what they're getting and and that's just uh that's been probably the best compliment right that we could you know that we could get to this you know this point yeah i, I agree with you and i'll reiterate kind of what you said too i mean when you think of burgers in mobile i mean yeah you, there are some iconic burgers yes. you know when you think about callahan's and butch cassidy's or you know squid Inc.'s collection of burgers yes. you know so and for y'all to like I said not even in a year uh, be put right up there with uh, with those guys. I think it definitely speaks to what y'all are doing. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Yeah, especially people that didn't really have any experience cooking burgers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll transition to our next segment of the show. Okay. That's called Meeting Three, and it's where uh, we've already gotten into the meat of the podcast. So I will ask you three uh, questions, three burning questions. I think everybody wa- everybody wants to know. <laughs> uh, first one is uh, what? Is, so you got to have a pet peeve in the restaurant industry. What is your pet peeve so far for the just as an industry as a whole? Um, you know, goodness, I don't know who listens to this, but uh, I think just all the um, on the administrative side of things. Sometimes it seems like uh, the bureaucracy and just getting a business started or, you know, now that we've been doing it, keeping it going, um, taxes, I mean, taxes stink, you know, when you see that come out every month. Uh, but I I think that's probably my biggest pet peeve is that, you know, right around the corner at any time, there's always, you know, there's something lurking and, and a lot of it rightfully so. Um, but you know, we've all been in those situations where you're like, this is busy work. You know, this doesn't feel, you know what I'm saying? It's not feel like this is not work that I should have to be doing. (laughs) And um, I think that's probably number one on my list. Yeah. All right, number two is a, uh, if you had one restaurant outside of Mobile, but within driving distance, um, that everyone should go to. Do you have a restaurant in mind oh, that gosh. people should go to? Outside of Mobile? But within driving distance. Within driving distance. Oh, my goodness. Um, gosh. And that can be Tuscaloosa up there where you went to school at. You know, I mean... My old hang in Tuscaloosa was like Buffalo Fills, uh, and I to this day I have like very fond memories of, of being in there with my buddies and uh, with Jess. And um, but I would say, you know, one hole like I don't want to call it a hole in the wall. It's not a hole in the wall, uh, but it's just uh, Creek Bank Restaurant. Have you ever heard of oh, that? Yeah, absolutely. Think, oh yeah, uh, Wakerville. At, yeah, at one point I know they were they were named like one of the best burgers in Alabama. Yeah. Well, working for Cisco, um, I actually sold them groceries, and uh, I had to eat in there absolutely every time. You know, I was in in that part of the world. I mean, it, which was about once a week. So, and that's uh, all that's up there anyway. So, that's right. but yeah, luckily, they're, they're that or the <laughs> uh, the uh, convenience store next door, and I, you know, they they obviously blew them out of the water. So, um, you know, if you're looking, you got a Saturday or whatever. Uh, I love it. It's one of those places where it feels like. You know, nothing's changed, um, you know, in, in a few years. And I'm sure I wasn't up there enough, but I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of familiar faces in there every oh, week yeah. that they get to. So, 
Uh, I don't know why that sprung into my That's head. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. A yeah. little off the beaten path, but I think if you're ever in that part of the world, well worth it. Yep. Highway 43, Wagerville, right. Alabama. Yeah. That's it. Shout out Creek to Bank Restaurant. Creek Bank Restaurant. <laughs> yep. I like it. That's a good one. All right. Number three, what would Adam choose for your final meal? Oh, man. Is this just food? Yeah, yeah. Or in general? Yeah. Um, man, I am a sucker for a filet. Yeah. And uh, I am going to give another shout out because, uh, I mean, one of my favorite places to go is Noja. Um, you know, we don't we don't go very often, but if I'm going in there and now that they have their, you know, their, their menu the way it is, I'm, it's like I, you didn't even need to change it for me because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get that meal every time. Yeah, you know what you're getting every That's time. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So like filet and probably their mashed potatoes, you know, if I could – if I could get those two things, I think yeah. I think that'd be a good last. That sounds time. good. Yeah. All right. Next segment of the show is Chris's dishes, and this is where I talk about the best dish that I've had lately. And I'll turn it over to you, and you can talk about okay. something that you've had lately too, as well. In addition to all the other good shout outs you've given so far, um, but the best thing that I had lately was the snapper bowl at Debris. And I know that's probably, and that's not what I expected to go in there and get when I went to Debris. Right. I went in there to get a po' boy, you know, of course, and. Uh, they were advertising a special that they had. It was a snapper bowl. So, and I got the snapper blackened, and it was over a bowl with cheese grits and collard greens. And so, man, I'm, I'm that's that's my jam right there. <laughs> it sounds awesome. Um, one of my favorite dishes was always at uh, Ed's Seafood Shed. They had yeah. a, a hot catfish bowl, kind of like that. You know, it was a hot pizza, uh, like kind of like Nashville hot, but catfish, fried catfish, and it was in the bowl of greens and grits. Love that. So, and I'm excited. You know, I know they're opening up. Uh, very soon, yeah. very very soon they're going to be reopening. So, but anyway, uh, the the snapper black and snapper bowl of debris uh, definitely recommend that. It was really good. On the Exceed, walk it back, definitely I, exceeded my expectations. I may have to just peek in there and see if it's on the chalkboard for today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it sounds amazing. I love debris too. I mean, they they do a great job there. But I feel like I need a nap every time <laughs> I leave. For sure, for sure. <laughs> So what's a uh, name a dish? What's something that you've had lately that's been good? Um, so I, I might. I might butcher the name a little bit, but a few weeks ago we went to Slurp Society, and um, I am I'm noodles, you know, sign me up. And we had tried to go several times, and man, just like we were when we opened, they were just so busy, and you know, you're you're hungry, and you know, we're like, okay, we'll come back, we'll come back. Well, we finally, you know, we got off work one evening and went and sat at the bar, and I believe it was the Battleship Curry. Okay. Amazing. I think, and we we definitely over ordered, man. Like we did the Brussels sprouts <laughs> as an appetizer. We each got a bowl. We did their, I believe they are bow sandwiches. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They had a little uh, smash burger, uh, cheeseburger bow or whatever that was on okay, there. Okay, nice. And then we did one other one, and of course I ended up eating the majority of it. So the the whole walk back, I was just miserable. But <laughs> oh, you walked all the way back um, from uh. From slurp to slurp. Society. Oh yeah, back to the food hall, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I don't know. It was just cool sitting at the bar watching, um, watching those those guys and girls in the back, you know, do their thing. Uh, Love kind of that open concept, kind of, you know, kind of like we do, but what they do is so different. So it just it made the experience even cooler. Yeah. Um, but my goodness, man, I, I I took the bowl home, and then the next day, I don't even know if I made it to the next day. I may have eaten it after I came out of my food coma uh, <laughs> later that night, but it was delicious. So whoever's out there, uh, go give them a try if you hadn't been yep, there Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and y'all can listen to the, the episode we did with uh, with Wade Price, Slurp Society, too. Yeah, I spoke and, to him uh, for a few minutes when I was in there, or very briefly, but, uh, you know, he's they're killing it, man. They're doing yep. a great job. Yeah, you mentioned those Brussels sprouts, and Oof. we talked about that with him on the so episode, good. man. I, I love those. Yes, I mean, yep. I, and I ate most of those, too, I think. Yep, yep. <laughs> I wasn't sharing. No, you can't. Well, Adam, thanks for coming in and sitting down with me and yeah, uh, and talking about your journey and, and everything y'all got going on. I really appreciate it, man. It's just, uh, I love going in, and I know I've seen you in there a million times. So Yeah, well, I, I, I appreciate you guys and uh, letting us be a, a, a part of your food tours. Yeah. And I think that's done nothing but – but help us tremendously. Um, well, yeah, I'll plug it right now. I mean, I have had, I've talked to several people who have gone back and, you know, of course, when I was leading the food tour there, you know, everybody was talking about how awesome the burger was. And, that's awesome. And I've had several people, like I said, talk, tell me they've gone back since then. So, yeah, y'all doing good. Well, I appreciate you having me, man. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Y'all go see Adam, Insider Food Hall, Hammered Cow, 
and um, and and yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a great place also to uh, take the family um, as well. You know, I, we've taken our kids in there, and you know, you, uh, I got one of my kids that likes wings, and one likes pizza, and uh, you know, tacos. So a little you, bit you, of everything. You can get everything, and uh, and and so I appreciate you coming on. Y'all go check out Adam. Y'all go check out the other episodes that we talked about uh, on the Port City Plate uh, podcast page. You can find it on iTunes, and hopefully y'all are subscribed to that on iTunes or Spotify. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find the, the Port City Plate podcast. And um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be sharing some of these dishes that we talked about in the Port City Plate Facebook group as well. So y'all check out everything there. That's where you'll find the latest episodes in the Port City Plate Facebook group. And, um, and until then, we will see y'all in the next episode. Bye.